Well, good morning, everyone. It is indeed a pleasure to have time to pay a tribute to David Klein. I met Dave in April 1970 when I arrived as a postdoc from Australia. He became one of my three mentors at the University of Alaska while I was a member of the Institute of Arctic Biology. Although well-versed in biology of sheep and cattle, I had a lot to learn about the ecology of ungulates in the north. And we're better to learn at the feet of David Klein. I read his work and we talked endlessly and had the occasional argument. That dialogue continued for the next uh, close to 30 years. Next to his escape to the field, Dave loved student and faculty seminars. However, he would immediately appear to fall asleep, but at the applause at the end of the seminar, he would awake and then ask the first searing question. Very terrifying. Dave loved workshops with colleagues and students, and at the conclusion of most, he would synthesize what happened in verse. So I think it's only fitting to honor him with this verse. Ode to the David Klein post-workshop poem. Dave, you have paved our brains with words profound. You paved our brains with verse and sound. From stating loud that winter regulates caribou population density, in contrast to summer that controls caribou individual phenotype propensity. When we pondered that all processes have a biome connection, you would argue that our processes needed correction. Dave, you have challenged administrative oversight that sometimes led, of course, to leadership insight. However, for your students and theses, you challenged pound for pound that usually led to new knowledge that was indeed profound. Now, our society will miss your verbal fray, but we will benefit from our recalls of you today. So Dave, how did you pave our brains with words sublime? Perhaps we saw it in your workshop syntheses written in rhyme. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a pleasure. Hi, my name is Maria Berger. I came to UAF in 1989 from Labrador, Canada, where I had studied the George River caribou herd. Long before I met Dave Klein, Bob White, or Pat Falkenberg, I had referred to their studies for field protocols, and I valued their expertise. Dave was my major advisor for my master's thesis on the Delta Bison herd, but beyond that, he was an exceptional mentor, welcoming grad students into his home for countless potlucks, inviting us on weekend outings to his remote cabins and on other trips. We learned from him through osmosis as he pointed out the results of grazing pressure on lichens, areas caribou had cratered and where moose had browsed. On the spring grazing ecology trip to southeast Alaska, we discovered remnant steppe tundra vegetation while roaming Sheep Mountain in Kiwani National Park. Later, we marveled at the cathedral-like atmosphere of giant hemlocks, firs, and spruces in the Tongass National Forest. Dave's Stone Hut was a regular winter destination. After parking at a pullout on Chena Hot Springs Road, we skied a portion of the Quest Trail along the North Fork, then struck out uphill among aspens through ungroomed snow, aided by a liberal application of sticky red wax since we did not own skins for our skis. Woe betide losing your balance in the unconsolidated depths. With backpack on, you would turn turtle and struggle endlessly to extricate yourself. Finally, we emerged onto tundra. Locating the stone hut could be a challenge. It was tucked in the lee of a hill's crest where sifting snow had often buried it. Dave kept a shovel hanging from a spruce near the hut to ensure easy entrance. Once we arrived to no shovel and used skis to chip away at the eight foot drift covering the roof and concealing the doorway. The picture shows Dave emerging after discovering that well-meaning grad students who had been hunting that fall 
had stumbled upon the shovel and placed it in the hut with a note for safekeeping. We would then carve steps in the snow to facilitate entry to the cabin. Inside, below the snowpack, no matter how wildly the wind howled, there was little sound and we took turns reading Robert's service while sipping Jägermeister. A fond memory is a ski traverse with Dave one Easter from Riley Creek in Denali Park over a pass into Windy Creek, which flows toward Cantwell. After overnighting at the Cantwell cabin, six of us flagged down the train and boarded with backpacks and skis. The conductor, out to impress three women in the group, let us blow the horn, which we reveled in. The men stood by chagrined, whereupon they were offered the opportunity to. They had a blast, literally. Our stop came up quickly and we disembarked to climb an aspen bank and drop into the mid-reaches of Riley Creek for a wonderful three-day three ski trip back to Cantwell. This describes a few of many outings with Dave. Spending much of his life outdoors gave him a wealth of observations to impart. Ecology for him was not just a profession but a lifelong passion that he passed on to those studying under him. Lastly, I want to mention Dave's sense of humour. He officiated at my wedding in 1995, writing a comical limerick for the occasion, which greatly enlivened the ceremony. I am grateful to have been influenced by Dave, a talented ecologist, kind advisor, and friend for many years. Thank you for this opportunity. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here at the 50th anniversary of the Alaska chapter of the Wildlife Society meeting. When Tom asked me to say a few words about Dave Klein, I was quite happy to accept. Uh, when I first met Dave in 1972, uh, that was the beginning of a very pleasant experience at the University of Alaska and then uh, a lifelong friendship uh, with Dave, uh, both formally as a student, he was on my committee, and then also informally as a friend on uh, many field trips. In thinking about Dave's contributions, uh, three things really stand out to me, and uh, probably the most important that Dave and several other people at the university and also at the Department of Fish and Game contributed to a very congenial learning environment. Um, there were several other people who also contributed, including Bob White, uh, Ray Cameron, Steve McLean, uh, Sam Harbo, uh, several others. Uh, so I think the informal part of the learning environment is really important and Dave was a, a big contributor to that. The second way I think Dave really contributed is to was to instill in students the feeling that a career in wildlife management was much more than a job, that it was a uh, dedication to public service, uh, honesty, uh, and Dave uh, followed, led by example. Um, he, he was always willing to work with students uh, any hour of the day, uh, on weekends, to take students uh, on field trips, to work in the field with his students. Um, so that was a, a really important contribution. I think the other important contribution was the fact that he had so many international connections and he made friends easily. And I think that's an important message for university administrators. Uh, they need to make sure that they have uh, faculty on the staff at the university who have international contacts and are outgoing and can maintain those contacts because the contacts that I made at the University of Alaska, the international contacts, lasted me a lifetime uh, and I'm still in contact with some of the people I met through Dave. Um, so I think that's the the main message that I have. I had a lot of fun with Dave. I really miss the guy and I think we all will and uh, we just need to think back about all of his contributions and how we can emulate them uh, to go forward. Thanks. Hi everybody. My name is Lisa Saperstein and Dave was my master's advisor from 1989 to 1993. I am currently a fire ecologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service here in Alaska. 
I think one of the things I admired most about Dave was his almost encyclopedic knowledge on such a broad variety of topics. It seems like these days, sometimes scientists immerse themselves in their, their area of expertise and, and have little knowledge and perhaps interest even in things outside of their orbit. Dave had more of a holistic approach and came at things from a naturalist perspective. It seemed like no matter where we were, the Seward Peninsula, Southeast Alaska, the interior, Greenland, he could talk at length about the species that were found there and the overall ecology of the region. And his knowledge wasn't limited to ecology. It included cultural and social context as well as history. And he always exuded enthusiasm and curiosity despite decades of field work. Starting when I was about 15 years old, I had aspirations of being a naturalist. So, so Dave's breadth of knowledge and, and his Renaissance man attitude really kind of appealed to me. Being in the field with Dave was the best time to soak up his knowledge, but there was one drawback. I don't know how tall Dave was, but I'm just shy of 5'2". And that man could move across the tundra, including tussocks, like a caribou. It's a little bit humbling to somebody in their 20s to be struggling to keep up with the man in his 60s, which at the time seemed really old, although it doesn't anymore. But at least I had my short legs as an excuse. I know other people in my cohort of grad students, some of which might be listening to this, that had the same problem, but they didn't have the short legs. I know I was thankful for those tempting berry patches that offered a reason for a break. Another thing I remember fondly were those frequent sauna parties and potlucks that Dave hosted. They embodied what I'd imagined about grad school before getting there. Professors, students, visiting researchers, all mingling in a social setting, talking about science and everything under the sun after having perhaps one too many glasses of wine than was advisable. And of course, there were Dave's legendary post-seminar questions that never covered something that was said during the lecture, despite the fact that he seemingly napped through most of it. The only time I saw him look abashed was when one person, I think it was one of the PhD students who were here from Scandinavia, showed a slide that said something to the effect of, and now is the time when Dave falls asleep. The laughter woke him up and he responded with a sheepish grin when he realized what was going on. We miss you, Dave. Greetings, my name is Dan Roby and I'm a former graduate student of Dave Klein's and recently retired as unit leader of the Oregon Cooperative Wildlife Research Unit at Oregon State University. Thanks to Tom Paragai and the Meeting Planning Committee for the 50th anniversary annual meeting of the Alaska chapter of the Wildlife Society for organizing this tribute to Dave Klein and offering me the opportunity to contribute to it. I think most of you are aware that Dave was an active member of the Wildlife Society throughout his career, a founding member of the Alaska chapter of, the, of TWS and the recipient of the Wildlife Society's highest honor, the Aldo Leopold Award in 1999. I first met Dave Klein in 1972 when I was visiting Alaska for the first time as an undergraduate student attending Antioch College. It wasn't more than a few minutes into my first conversation with Dave in his office in the Irving Building that I decided I wanted to be a wildlife biologist with the Cooperative Wildlife Research Unit program and perhaps someday be a unit leader, just like Dave. With Dave's mentorship throughout my subsequent career, I was able to achieve that dream. Dave was a tremendous inspiration to me, both personally and professionally, and I know that I was only one of many, many graduate students and postdocs whom he inspired to pursue careers in ecology and wildlife biology, particularly in the Arctic, and to be the very best they could in pursuing their professional careers. Dave was not just a leader in title, but a true leader in all respects. The former chief of the Cooperative Research Unit Program once said that the Alaska Cooperative Wildlife Research Unit at the University of Alaska was the crown jewel of the Cooperative Research Unit program. And the unique stature of the Wild Alaska unit was due primarily to one factor, Dave. Dave was an internationally recognized and highly respected scientist whose work on Arctic ecology took him throughout the circumpolar north. He had devoted friends and colleagues wherever he pursued his research interests as his enthusiasm for boreal ecology and the peoples of the north was infectious. 
and while Day's interest was primarily focused on the ecology of northern ungulates, Day's research portfolio was far more eclectic. I can remember, for example, that when visiting his home in Fairbanks for one of his famous sauna parties that I was amazed to see that he had set up a cafeteria-style study of snowshoe hair browse preferences in his backyard, simply because he wanted to learn more about hair foraging ecology. Day was a highly perceptive and creative scientist who made many contributions to the basic ecology of Alaska and the circumpolar north, but his educational background was largely in the more applied fields of wildlife management and conservation. Dave never stopped pursuing science that was not only elegant, but also relevant to the conservation of Alaska's wildlife and other natural resources. His advocacy for science-based conservation and management was notorious and effective in promoting enlightened management of wildlife throughout Alaska and the circumpolar north. And Dave was in it for the long haul. After retiring as unit leader in 1991, he continued pursuing his research interests as a senior scientist into, until 1997, followed by a 20-year career as a retired federal scientist. Dave's endurance and stamina were legendary, and he continued pursuing a strenuous schedule of travel and professional work into his 90s. Many of us who had the good fortune to share some time and adventures with Dave during his long and inspiring life will greatly miss his intellect, his energy, his good humor, his love of the outdoors, his pioneering spirit, and his passion for all things Alaskan. I am very grateful to have had Dave as a major professor, teacher, mentor, colleague, and friend, and will miss him tremendously. He was indeed a magnificent man. Thank you.